Donkey Welfare Symposium. It became evident that there were a large number of people that are very excited about donkeys, love them, uh, are fascinated by them, and are very concerned about the welfare, particularly of donkeys in this country that are unwanted and donkeys in burrows throughout the world that carry much of the burden for mankind and have done that for millennia. This is a rental donkey in a market in Ethiopia. Um, you know, what is its life like? Um, how old is it? You know, what are its relationships? Um, what will happen at the end of its working life? These are the, you know, these to me are the, the real fundamental questions about why I, I do this work. And this group of animals, we actually know very, very little about. And I'll touch on some of the information, some of the research that has recently been conducted, I've been involved with. Looking at things as simple as, what's the baseline temperature of a mule? I see a donkey, an animal with potential. And I see people with potential. Just need to release it. We need to let it out. We need to, whether we're in Africa, whether we're in America, we need to get out of the way of ourselves and release the potential. You can do it. We're also going to have a discussion of donkey-assisted therapy. Psychologists, both from the U.S. and from England, will be discussing uh, the use of donkeys in helping humans. It's very easy for us to stand there for 15 minutes because I love you. But you don't learn anything, you know? So I want to give him a scratch and find out, does he value what I've just done? It should be browsing for a good 16 hours a day. So it is really important that for, for, for most of the day they are browsing. You know, they're browsing. Often they'll be trying to make long distances and that's how they maintain a normal body condition. What I'm just going to focus on now is one condition which isn't um, limited to donkeys, but we do know that they are a very high risk for, which is hyperlipemia. Um, and then just at the end, we've obviously spoken a little bit about weight management and obesity. Um, we'll talk about um, what benzodiosis is, a little bit of background information, the clinical signs, and current methods of diagnosis, and then finish off by um, sharing with you the results of the evaluation of three serologic assays for the detection of antibodies against those new species in donkeys. The question being asked was, what constrains the animal health of animals owned by the poor, the resource poor? And when they asked the question about donkeys, there were three answers. The top of the charts were parasites, trypanosome parasites, number two, and number three, wounds and injuries. Uh, it's impossible to change somebody else's behavior. They can change their behavior, you can change your behavior. It's always a choice. If someone wants to feel, please come. Uh, put your fingers like that. Leave the tongue in the middle. Go until the very end and feel both lower arcades at the same time. That's the way I do it to see if they are symmetrical and rough. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be here. When Eric asked me, it was almost a year ago, to talk about herpes viruses in donkeys, I was a little bit reluctant because if you look at the literature, I, I could be done in one slide. So I'm, I'm actually glad that we added the mules, but it wasn't enough. So we had to add the horses. So prevention is, it, it, it's interesting, everybody agonizes over the prevention. Every time we have an outbreak, we have to reinvent the wheel of biosecurity. Prevention is generally based on good biosecurity, monitoring the animal, and potentially using vaccination, a very potent way to, to minimize disease. So I'm going to talk about donkeys, and donkeys actually share a lot of things with all um, equides, like horses, zebra, mules, and um, sarco is actually a huge problem in um, all those um, critters, and uh, they represent about 50% of all cutaneous tumors in equides, which include horse, donkey, and mules. Um, what is a sarcoid? I would like to uh, preface this particular discussion by saying that fertility control in uh, wild horse and burrow populations are uh, not without controversy. Do we have any adopters? Has anybody here adopted a burrow, a burrow from us? Yay, thank you very much. <laughs> Keep up the good work. The BLM is a federal agency. We work on the U.S. Department of the Interior. 
We are tasked with managing lands in the Western United States. I would encourage everybody to adopt one of these guys, take one from the wild and down to gentle. It's a lot of fun. It's so great to be in a room filled with other long-eared lovers. Um, a little bit about um, myself as well as the Humane Society of the United States, although Eric's pretty much covered that. Um, the Humane Society of the United States, the largest animal advocacy group in the country with uh, over 11 million supporters. Uh, we are going to talk about combinations for field anesthesia and I think it's safe to say, I mean I've been to the donkey sanctuary two or three times to help them with their anesthesia so I think I can speak to the combinations that they tend to use. The, the videos that we're going to show involve um, anesthetic sed sedation, um, induction, we got a couple of surgeries in there and recovery, and they they range from our experiences at uh, uh, in Texas at, in San Angelo, and then also some of them will look like they happened in Mexico because they were in Mexico. Also, discussions on pharmacology. Donkeys are not horses with large ears; they are a separate species, and they respond to drugs and other types of therapy differently. And we all come together as people who are interested in the issue of donkey welfare and we come together as peers so that if you have a question of somebody in an area that you're not familiar with, they know that they're there to discuss it in terms that you can understand. 